By adding dash dash tile to the end of your prompt, you can create seamlessly tiling images in mid journey really easily. And that's just the first of, me of many parameters I'm gonna cover in this video. I'm gonna try and cover them all today, at least at the time of recording. So let's get started. The next is dash dash repeat. If you add dash dash repeat to the end of your prompt with a space and a number, mid journey will produce that prompt the number of times that you've entered. And this depends on which subscription you have as to how far you can go. If you have a basic subscription, values of two to four are accepted. If you have a standard subscription, up to 10 you can use, or if you have a pro or mega subscription, you can do up to 40 repeats at a time. And these same numbers apply for permutations where you use some curly brackets comma separated values and you can actually create several different prompts by adding in different variations you want to change within that prompt. And there is a full tutorial in the description if you wanna check that out. The next is chaos. Simply adding dash dash chaos and a number from one to 100 will change just how much variation there is between the images in your image grid that you generate. The lower the number, the less variation, the higher the number, the more variation. So by adding a uh, dash dash chaos one, we get this image. By adding in dash dash chaos 100, we get this. And you can basically check out everywhere in between from 20 onwards up to 100. And you can see the differences in these images by using this chaos setting. Now, a very quick reminder that I have all of these parameters in my mid journey cheat sheet, which is available linked to in the description below but let's keep going. The next parameter is weird. By adding dash dash weird to the end of our prompt, anywhere from one to 3000, we get weirder and weirder results. So if I add in a weird rating of dash dash one, it's actually not that weird at all. If I add in a weird rating of say a thousand, it gets a lot weirder. So if you take a look at the images I'm gonna pop on the screen right now, starting at the lowest setting, we're gonna climb up through various weird ratings, different numbers, all the way up to 3000. And you can see how things gradually get weirder and weirder as we increase the score. And this is all using the exact same prompt. And you can also use stylized to affect the look of your images. Adding dash dash stylized to your image anywhere from one to 1000 also adds Midjourney's opinionated nature to that image. So by adding a stylized value of one, this is what you get. Something very basic and you add a stylized of 1000 and it's a little bit more opinionated and stylized. And again, if I go through the various scores of stylized here, you can see there's a little bit of a difference between each one. Same prompt, a bit of a slightly different style for each. Now, one great tip is to combine chaos, weird, and stylize, you can max out those values or try different values across all of them to get very different results and really take your images off the deep end if that's the kind of effect you're looking for. Also, if you haven't figured out how to change your aspect ratio yet, dash dash AR will change your aspect ratio. So add dash dash AR to the end of your prompt, followed by a numeral value for the width and the height, and that is the ratio size of image you'll get. So one to one will produce a square, 16 to nine will produce something that is more television shaped. But if you flip those numbers from nine to 16, you get something that's a little bit more portrait. And you can put whatever numbers you want in here, and generally speaking, you will get a result of some kind. Next, you can create a mid-journey generation video using dash dash video. Add dash dash video to the end of your prompt, I'm also gonna add an aspect ratio of 16 to nine and hit enter. And you'll get your grid of images. It's important to note that this doesn't work with a single image, but I will give you a quick link on how to crop it and separate it. But for now, we need to react to this message with an envelope by clicking add reaction. We can view more if you don't have these here. Type in envelope and choose the plain envelope. You'll receive this message and there'll be a video at the bottom or a link here that you can click to view the video. And of course you can download the video from here. And if you search for Adobe Video Cropper, there's an Adobe Express free service you can upload your video with by clicking upload video, clicking here, choosing your video and cropping like this. Then hit download when complete and you will then have your cropped video. A link to this will be in the description below. Now, if you've ever checked out slash settings before, you'll notice you have turbo mode, 
fast mode and relax mode. And these are sort of different speeds your images will generate. You can actually apply parameters to the ends of your prompts to dedicate what speed is applied to that prompt. Dash dash relax is the slowest, but does not use GPU time. And you do need at least a $30 plan to use that. Or you can type in dash dash fast to use the default speed. Or you can even type in dash dash turbo at the end of that prompt to render that prompt at the fastest speed available. You can also use dash dash V to choose different versions of the mid journey model and even go back in time to see what we used to be able to get. So typing it in your prompt dash dash V space and then the version number will get you this. So version one gets you an image that looks something like this. And then move on version two, where you get a slightly better image. Version three, which was when it really hit its stride in popularity. But version four was the big leap up to creating better images. Version five, then took another step up in quality. And then we've also had version 5A, which was a step in between before going to 5.1 and version 5.2. And some hidden models between version three and four, which was dash dash test and also dash dash test dash dash creative. And then you also had dash dash test P and dash dash test P creative. And yet again, without actually using the version command, there's dash dash Niji, the anime style. It can also go back to dash dash Niji four for the old anime style used in mid journey. That brings us to dash dash style, which is different styles within certain models. So I can type dash dash style at the end of my prompt. However, I would prefer to type in the version as well. So the following will be the version and the styles that work with that version. Now version 5.1 has style raw, which removes the opinionated nature of mid journey and follows your prompts more directly. And the same thing is available for version 5.2. So moving on to version four, we have version 4A, which is one iteration of version four. And then we have version 4B, which is another iteration of version four. And then we have version 4C, which is the current default for version four if you don't add a style parameter. And then the hidden V4 style, Cursed, which is a little bit different, a little bit crazy. But moving on to Niji, we have the original Niji style. And then we also have the cute style, which is kind of like that cute anime style. Then we also have expressive. So Niji's expressive styles are a little bit different. And then also Niji scenic, which is primarily for scenes, but gets you some interesting results when doing characters as well. Now style also works when using the tune function with mid journey, which means you're basically going to hit slash tune, type in a prompt and pick a bunch of images to create your own style using mid journey. But you get this style code that you can add onto the end when using version 5.2. However, you can use those styles, you can share them, you can even link them together by having dashes in between them and have several different styles in there. But you can also type in dash style random to get some random styles that way. A part of tuning these styles is choosing how many images you're actually going to work with. So with random, you can type in random dash 16 for random styles based on 16 images or random dash 64 for styles based on 64 images or random dash 128 for styles based on 128 images. I'd also like to add that if you haven't actually got all of the styles you've created on hand, you can go to slash list underscore tuners in Discord and it will take you to the different style tuners you've actually created. So you can go in there and create even more style codes to use with your prompts. The next parameter is dash dash stop, which allows you to stop your mid journey render partway through its process. So by typing in dash dash stop, at the end of your prompt, you can actually stop it at a percentage way through. So if I stop it at say 50%, so type in dash dash stop 50, I get an image like this. But check out the process. I've created one image using the same seed with a stop from 10 through to 100. And you can see the difference as it goes through the process. And similar but different is dash dash Q for quality, where you can speed up how fast an image is rendered, but it will render the complete image. Type in dash dash Q 0.25 and you'll get an image that looks like this. You can also go to dash dash Q 0.5 for half speed and get an image like this. But if you type in Q1, you're just getting your normal rendered image at the standard mid journey speed. Also don't forget dash dash no for negative words. So I have my image here, a mutated frog of human features. There's plenty of green and there's these big eyes. So I can actually choose to try and remove some of these features by typing in dash dash no, and then words of basically objects I don't want to see. 
So I'm going to type in no green because I don't want any green in the photo. I'm also going to type in eyes because I don't want any eyes and hit enter. Now as you can see scrolling down, it's removed the green, uh, but it has had a lot of trouble removing the eyes and it's had a bit of trouble processing that in general. But overall, a bit of success at least removing the green. It can be a bit hit and miss, but experiment with it to see what you can get. Next we have dash dash seed, which is the starting point of an image. If I give it a numeral value of at least six digits, I can actually add a seed number to my image. Now look what happens when I submit that image. Now I'm gonna come down, type it in with the same seed number again and submit yet again. And you'll notice the image is the same both ways. But when I change a number in that seed this time, the image turns out different. So having a same, having that seed number the same across the board is actually a way to kind of experiment with different parts of your mid journey image to see what changes you can make either stylistically or certain phrases in your prompt. And finally, we have image weight. So this is basically what you use when you have an image in your prompt, you can actually assign it a weight using image weight. So I've copied an image URL, I'm gonna type in a prompt, paste that URL in, add in a prompt on the end and type in IW dash dash IW for image weight. I'm gonna give it a weight of two to double the priority of the image. You can see it's created something similar to the image we pulled up before, but if I take that exact same prompt and give the image weight 0.5, you can see it's relied less on the image and more on the prompt. So the bird and the dog are both present, whereas before, because I put so much weight on the bird or the image of the bird, it focused primarily on the bird. But I don't have to use image weight if I don't want to. I can remove it and just simply type in, much like I would with word weight, two colons and two on the end again, and actually image weight it that way as well. So it's not technically a parameter, but it does do the job. Now, next we have some legacy parameters. I want to touch on a few upscalers first which essentially just take older versions of Midjourney and allow you to upscale them to a higher resolution. The first one is dash dash HD. Dash dash HD only works with version two and version three, but you see I've included it here in my prompt. And typically when I would upscale one of these images, I would get an image that's 1024 by 1024 pixel. But I have upscaled this image here. We've got my prompt dash dash HD version three. It is 1536 by 1536 pixels when upscaled. And you may notice down here we have light upscale and beta upscale. You actually have parameters for those two and they work up to version four. So dash dash up light will be the up light rescale. Now dash dash up light works up to version four, like I said before, and it'll produce images that are 1536 by 1536 as well, as opposed to 1024 by 1024. Up beta actually makes those images 2048 by 2048 if you're using that as well. And that's just by adding that to your prompt and upscaling as you would normally. Now, the final one I wanna to touch on is same seed. If you look here, you'll notice that same seed basically applies to the same seed to each image. So your grid project produces something that is very similar on each grid. And this works up to version three. However, when I tried it for this video, it didn't work. So it may not work anymore. As opposed to when you remove same seed, you get a different result for each image. So that is something as well. It's called a legacy parameter. However, I think they might be removing it. At least it wasn't working when I tried it earlier. And if there's some parameters you heard of that aren't available anymore, there's a bunch of them here that have been depreciated, such as width, height, fast, vibe, up anime, HQ, all these here are all old parameters that used to work but have since been removed. So that gives you a very comprehensive list of what currently works, at least at the time of recording. It is hard to keep up with this because Midjourney constantly updates and adds new things, which is good for Midjourney and means that I might have to update this video sometime soon. Just remember I've got, just remember I've got my Midjourney cheat sheet in the description below. If you want a list of these that you can print out, keep on board along with a whole bunch of other commands and parameters, and it will help you use Midjourney to the fullest. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, please consider giving it a like. If you haven't seen my commands video, which covers all of these slash commands, it's on the screen right now. Otherwise, I hope you have a great day. We'll see you again next time.